Hello, Aqua here again. Welcome to episode 12 of my Ultimate Feed the Beats Let's Play. And we're not actually on the server at the minute, we're on the main server I play on. And we're here for a reason. It's to do with today's episode. And it's because we're going to make a system similar to this one. Now, this is our XP grander on the main server. And this is kind of what I want the grander on the let's play to end up like. But to get to this point, it's going to take quite a bit of work and um, quite a lot of materials. So I never actually finished. I was I never actually finished this. I was going to put the uh, levers all up there, but I'll get around to that at some point. So if I turn the skeletons on, you see the skeletons drop down and one block further, the skeletons will be dead. So the golems just finish the skeletons off. And all the XP goes into the jars. Grab the XP from the jars. And then the chanting table nearby, uh, uncrafting table down there, anvil, and some empty books, spare anvils and stuff. And all the stuff goes in the barrels. You see we've run this a lot. Uh, it's been left on overnight a few times, sometimes by mistake. Uh, I'm not sure if they dropped the skulls anymore. I heard he was changing it, but I'm not sure if he did. So, I was going to have a quick look at this. I thought I'd um, start the episode here. Now, a couple of things you need to work out when you're doing a drop spawn like this is how far do the mobs need to drop? Now, to do that, oops, we need to find out. So, we're on level. 38 and the top here is level 61 so let's just make sure that right so the spawn is one lower than that oops so the spawn is 60 so 22 is it we're dropping them 22 blocks I always get confused where my head height is and my um, feet height is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Sticky keys came on then, left thing. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So we're dropping twenty-three blocks. So to start off, I'll be dropping these guys 23 blocks. Now wither skeletons are horrible because they obviously with, with the wither you. So you need to make sure that you've got a way of killing them. Now we haven't done the research for these guys yet. We haven't done the research for the jars yet either. But, um, so some things aren't going to be like this straight away but I think you're doing it a slightly different way with water and uh, turtles so we'll see how it goes so um, I just wanted to start the episode with that and once I've got a couple of things ready I'll be back on the let's play server and we'll start putting this together okay we're back on the let's play server um, I did a little bit of stuff yesterday the the video was lit up yesterday because the um, the upload failed at 95% so I had to do it all again so the the video that was up yesterday should have been up a lot earlier um, I was going to do a second video but I ended up going for a few drinks with my sister and uh, her boyfriend so I was a little bit a little bit drunk and I thought I best not make videos drunk it's it's uh, gonna end badly so I didn't do a, a second video yesterday um, a couple of things I want to show you in the house before we get on with the XP grinder stuff. Looks like Dave stopped working. Oh no. 
just putting some stuff into his into his chest. So he's beavering away. Uh, I changed this around a little bit. I've made it so that you can feed birch saplings into the engine. Because I've not actually got a use for birch for the saplings at the minute. I'm using the wood. But the saplings are no use. So what that's doing, again with the GUI issue, is it feeds birch saplings back into the engine so he's always got fuel. Because he can burn saplings. So the wood and the saplings go into the other bits and then now and again I just have to refill this. And uh, that'll keep him running. So you can see that's two of the cart. You can click on the arrows there to do two or from. Um, these are all from the cart and from the storage slots. And that's two of the engine. So that's how you set that up. Uh, melons. I'm guessing this chest's full. Yep. So that's why melons are good for seeds. I emptied this chest at the same time, so we've got some wheat going in still, we've got some flax, we've got some sugar cane, and oh, we've got some melons, and look how many more melons there is than anything else. So that's why you, for seed production, melons are really good. And that can bring me on to the next thing, which is, I've expanded this a little bit, what I've added is... First of all, I'll put the pipe, I'll put the ME cable under the ground. And now it comes to this thing, which is a ME drive. What the ME drive does is, you can put your storage slots in, your storage um, units into there. So and that's, I'm going to have to make a bit of space in my inventory. So if we look down here, we've got the first storage slot we had in, I think gets and gems and stuff, so that's still there. I've got the second storage slot has got my um, blocks, that kind of thing. And I've got a third storage slot in there with organic stuff. So I've got somewhere for this sugar to go and the wheat. But these are filling up. They're not going to last real long. Um, let me get some seeds in there out of the way. I actually need some... I want to keep some normal seeds aside because I want them to breed chickens. So I've got some normal seeds in there. And I'll just put that string in there for now. So I'm going to turn all this into seeds in a minute, and you'll see how much. I mean, you can you can see immediately that in the time it took to get less than two stacks of flax seeds, I've got all these stacks of melon, and these transfer on a one-to-one -one basis melons to seeds. So you get a hell of a lot more seeds from melons, easy enough to sort out your bee um, production with. Um, impregnated frames, impregnated sticks and stuff. So that's why I was looking for melons. That was that was why it was, it was important to me. Um, so yes, yeah, this semi dry thing. So I've got three storage units in here. I can take a storage unit out and put it in the chest. You can see what's on, see on the storage unit. So that's the first one that we had. So that's still all the, got the similar kind of stuff. I've got a couple of extra types of ingot and stuff because um, with them from chest. You can see when there's a drive in the slot, you can see it's in there. So the second one was most of the blocks and stuff that was in these barrels. So there you go, that's what's in there. And then um, you can see these are getting pretty full because they're only pretty small storage units. Well, half full, a bit over half. And that one's the organic, the one that I've got the seeds and stuff in. And the uh, sugar, that's pretty full. We've got a lot of wood in there, a lot of saplings. So what you can do with these, that I didn't know before, is if this was empty, I believe you can check on the wiki. If I was to shift and right click that, it actually pops the storage unit out of it, so you can actually upgrade it. And by that, I mean if you look, I'm actually I've got things filtered down to the Pine Energy Six stuff here. If you look, the recipes are actually all the same apart from the storage cell. So the only thing that changes in M4 guys is the storage cell. So shift right clicking pops that storage cell out and gives you the frame back. And then you can just put in a bigger storage cell. So you never have to make the frames again. The frames aren't that expensive though to be honest. But what you do is you get the storage cell back. And um, if you look in the larger ones, the larger ones are made 
the larger storage segments are made using the storage cells from the smaller ones. So what you can do is you make yourself the drive. The drive's pretty cheap to make. Uh, it takes two of them basic processors, chests and stuff. So that's pretty cheap to make. You can fill that with the basic storage drives. And then when you start getting issues with that being full, or getting near to full, you can um, start upgrading by actually using the storage cells. So you take three storage cells, cells out of three of these normal ones. You've got the right, the right amount of storage cells to make the upgraded storage segment. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually build it up as you need to. As you get more and more materials, you can just keep building the system. So that's really cool. And um, the next thing I'm going to make is this is just the ME terminal. There's an upgrade to the ME terminal. And it's called a crafting terminal, I believe. Um, where is it? ME crafting terminal. And it actually takes the ME access terminal so that, as an ingredient. So that's this thing. And what that does is that lets you craft from this window here, which is pretty cool. Um, all these chests really can go because I can make a few more storage units. And every you can literally have everything, everything in there. Really cool. And then we can get into the automation. We can attach uh, buses to the machines and stuff to get input and output into that system. So this system really is awesome. Um, the entire thing will be built from the entire system here will be built from it at some point. Um, it's just a case of getting to it. I'm gonna have to and again. I've mentioned before. I'm gonna have to rebuild at some point and get it all sorted. Um, in between the last episode and this, I had a little fly around in the Twilight Forest. And I found a couple more of the hills. I did a little bit more clearing up work in the hill I found yesterday. Um, I found a creeper spawner, so I've got I've got 200 kills in a, into a creeper shard for gunpowder for later on. Um, and I found a couple more hills, and in each hill I found at least one skeleton spawner. So what I've done is I've got a full skeleton shard. So you see when they go full, the, the bar underneath goes. And so with a skeleton tier 5, I've killed 1,024. So the next thing we need is we so that one is a soul cage. A soul cage is pretty straightforward. It's just eight iron bars and a square. So let's make one of them. So uh, I said this is all mess still. I've got five iron bars, so I need a bit more iron. Um, iron, 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 iron. We've got no iron. Oh, there is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we have to get rid of some of these these melons, aren't we? So bear with me one second while I get rid of these. And again, um, if you watch, I don't know if you watch generic B stuff, but. My plan was always to make a steam boiler running off a uh, refined, refined bee, which produces petroleum combs. And if you watch Generic Bees Feed the Beast, this episode that went up yesterday, is set his system to the same thing. And it looks like one bee's powering his high pressure steam boiler. So that was the plan I was hoping for. It looks like it's going to work. So that's still the plan I'm going to go for. Um, see them seeds, as I showed you before, make these frames. I'm up to three here periods now. I've got my two cultivated still going, and I've got an imperial queen going. I've only just got that going, so that's I've not actually set the um, set the diamond pipe up to put them into the chest yet. So there's, there's no raw jelly in the chest yet, but so I've got quite a lot of stuff in there. I've got some imperial drones, majestic drones, noble cultivated common. So I'll be getting a serum of all these at some point. Um, plenty of honeycombs. I need to start expanding this system to start automatically processing all that stuff because this is pretty full. You start turning some of this honey into liquid honey. You need to start um, melting these bees down into liquid DNA. Start making some of the genetic machines and stuff. So that's something else that's on the list. Uh, I've got a bit of space there now, so I can make these guys. 
and we can make a soul cage. So your soul cage you can just place in the world. And if I was to right click on it with soul shard, it'd place it in there. Um because it's a tier five soul shard, it need a redstone signal on it to stop things spawning. If I spawn it there I'd just I'd just, I'd be dead in seconds because there'll be wither skeletons everywhere. Um previously when I've put a wither skeleton shard into a soul cage and then broken it again it's turned back into a normal skeleton shard so that's something you should be aware of now let's make a couple more things i'm going to make them off camera then i'm going to show you why what i've, what I've made and why i've made them and i think i've got a good place to put this so i should be back in a little while so back again real quick just to show you the how these are made the things i needed to make was wireless receiver and a wireless um, transmitter. Now this is the recipe for the transmitter. It's a transceiver, an obsidian stick and then some of the red power logic stuff. The receiver is exactly the same but before you put this bit together you make a stone ball which is just three bits of stone and then you combine the transceiver with a stone ball to get um, the bit with the dish and then that just goes in the place of this so that'd be a wireless receiver I guess it's called and then let's craft that so we've got a transmitter and a receiver and the way these work I'll keep that out of the way for now Oops. is if we put them down in the world let's get a lever it's not a lever that's a stick idiot put them down in the world first thing you need to do is you sense the same frequency so if you look at the advanced stuff here, um, you can sense whatever you want. I set these to a private frequency. Well, no, I don't. On the, on the other server, they're uh, they're sh shared, so I'll put them to a shared frequency. Um, you can see what shared and private frequencies and sniffers and all stuff on the wiki for this. This is Wireless Redstone Chicken Bones Edition is the name of the mod that these are from. Um, some pretty in-depth stuff. It's pretty cool. So if I put that to um, call it XP grander and we'll give it the frequency of 999 I'll set that and I'll have to take that in again because I'm an idiot we'll set that to XP grander and now if we click on this all you've got to do is double click the the name in the list there so if you've got more than one you'll have a list of names and that'll set that to the same so what we do now is if we put a signal on this one puts a signal on that one as well so that's pretty cool so that's how we turn the spawner on and off so you don't have to have a wire running down them 23 blocks so we've got them ready so that's cool so now i'm going to go prep the area and um actually i've seen if i've got enough materials to make a killy tail i don't know what the killy tails are called but uh, i shall be back back in a bit again and back again so the next thing we're going to need is a piece of kit that I always carry with me whenever as soon as I've made one. Um a very useful piece of kit. I carry it with a couple of other things that go with it. Um I'm just making a couple of gears here that are for it. Uh oops, I'm gonna need I keep doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. What I'm making here is a Oh, I've missed a stone out. I need stone first. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cobble. So I'm making some couple of gold gears. So some of you might already know what I'm making. This is a build craft item that on the main server I have in my I carry it in my ender bag all the time. And combine that with a couple of other things. And you get what's called a filler. Now, a filler build craft powered. So we're going to be borrowing our redstone energy cell. I need to make a second one at some point. And what it does, you can put certain patterns in it. And depending on which pattern it's in, it'll have a build your structure or it can clear a structure. So I need to make a couple more things. I need to make some landmarks so you make landmarks by making 
Um, redstone torches. And then you need some lapis. And I actually need... No, I'm not. Yep. So we'll make some redstone torches. Then you just add lapis to them. That gets your landmarks. That's the final thing you need. For your filler. And there we go. We've got a filler. You also need some landmarks to lay out the area. You also need a couple of other things. If you're doing a fill pattern, you need some bricks. You need nine bricks to do a complete fill. And I'll show you what this all is when, uh, when we've got it set up. But I'll put them back. So we're going to need nine bricks. I'm going to start carrying nine bricks around with me. And um, nine bits of glass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're the things I usually carry. Now, I'll show you the filler real quick. You put the filler down as this spot at the top and as this at the bottom. If we're doing a, if we want to clear an area, you put nine glass blocks in there. You get this, you see, it's just a, a, a white square this pattern, that's a clear pattern. So if we build an area to clear using the landmarks, and by that I mean you put landmarks down oops, and then click on them, you can create a grid. And it can be a oops, it can be a three dimensional grid. It's uh so there we go. If we place the filler down next to that we could clear that area which in this case would only clear them three blocks. Or we could fill that area in. Or we could make that area into a box. And by that I mean. So fill it in. If you put all nine bricks in there, that becomes a fill pattern. So that would fill all that in. If you put eight bricks in there, it becomes a box pattern. So what I'd do is it'd fill in all the outsides and it'd leave a hole in the middle. And there's other patterns as well. I believe there's a step pattern, yep there there is, so that would create a stepped wall or structure, and I believe there's a pyramid pattern, yeah, how does the pyramid pattern work? So yeah, there's other patterns, you can check on the wiki, the pyramid pattern is maybe just a step pattern if you set up the right way, so that's the fillet, I'm going to be using that to clear out the area where the spawner is going to go, so I just wanted to show you making that, and once the area is clear, I'll be back to show you it. So I shall see you in a bit. So we're back again and um, by necessity I'm going to have to show you where the spawner is going to be now. Uh, some of you probably already guessed where I was going to put it. I'm just going to borrow that guy. I'm just going to use some of its power. Now if we go for our little nether thing here. Now this is something that needs to upgrade as well. I generally call this a nether, nether hub. At the minute it's just a hole in a wall really. But, uh, we need to make a, some kind of structure for these things for getting around. So we've got three books here. One takes us home, one goes to the desert and one just goes down to the cave under my house just so I didn't have to go down the ladder all the time which is extremely lazy. We're going to the desert one. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see something's changed here. We've got some windows in there. If you, uh, come down here, let's put some makeshift doors in for now well, this is where our spawner is going to be so the spawner, the spawner cage is there I put some landmarks down so what we need to do now is what I'll do is I'm going to clear a nice big area out and then I'm going to put walls back in so the size that I want so see the filler in action Filler goes there, and now that's changed them red lines into an actual black and white frame, uh, black and yellow frame. I'm just going to jump down here, grab my other landmarks. So I've gone down quite deep. I've gone down to 30. We don't need to go down that deep. As you can hear down, down here, there's loads of monsters and stuff around the outside, which is why I like to clear a nice big area out just so I can. Uh, Get some walls around it, make sure that none of the mobs on the outside get in at us while we're in the 
XP fam. So that's how we do that. Now we put our bits of glass in there, make it the clear pattern, like so. And now all we need to do is stick that there and check that out. Now you used to be able to use this for um, for quarrying because the blocks would remain. You can just run around picking all the blocks up. Um, you can pick them up if you're really quick. I'll grab these bits of quartz, I think. I'm standing over them. Um, but they'll change that because it was never meant to be used as a quarry. And it was getting oh, there's a bit of uranium there, I just missed. Um, so yeah, I'm losing a bit of resources this way, but the world's unlimited size, so there's always more resources. But it's no big deal. Um, yeah, they was never meant to be used as a quarry, so they changed it so that anything that the filler breaks gets despawned after a second or so. Eh, I don't need that one, is it? I'll have that copper though. So if you stand right on top of stuff, you see, um, you get it before it despawns. We're going to go right down to level 30 here, and then I'm going to rebuild the walls back in. Have them rubies. Um, you know what? My inventory's full. Oh, so yes, I will. Good, good. So, no. Alright, how far down are we? Stuff everywhere. So it's going to take a bit of tidying up. So, once I've got it all tidied up, I should be back again. And we'll do the next bit. Get all the walls put back in and stuff. Well, um, I'm going to have is a ladder down there. And I'm going to have it so that you can actually just spawn in at the bottom using a book. But I'm having it so you can come up the ladder if you want to have a look up the top and see them dropping stuff. So I'm going to build all that and I shall be back when that's done. See you in a bit. And we're back once again. Um, this is going to be the last part of this video because it's starting to run a little bit long. So I'm just setting things up to put some walls back in now I think I've got it deep enough there I'm gonna double check once I've uh, put it all back together I've sorted a few things out I'm actually using my diggers backpack here that I don't think I've shown diggers backpack can store things like cobble, dirt, in this case sandstone so um, what I've been doing is been prepping this area a little bit to so put the walls back in because I want, I want it all looking nice. It's not just about um, having it purely functional, is it? So let's get that there. Go grab our landmarks because uh, lapis is a bit worth saving at the minute. So what we're going to do now, this time, we'll put the pattern in that's a box. What that'll do is I'll fill this in in a box pan, funnily enough. Uh -oh. Because we're actually filling in, we need stuff in the hopper part of the filler this time. Now, I'm going to carry on doing this as soon as this starts encoding and stuff. So the next video will be up straight as soon as this one is uploaded, the next one will start coming up. But um, bear in mind, my, upload, my download speed from my ISP is pretty good, but my upload is... is pretty bad so my uploads take a long time unfortunately Um it generally takes me about f four hours to upload a movie uh, one of these so what that does as you can see it's making a box uh, I've run out of sandstone so what I need to do is I'm just going to change that to high because that'll keep draining power because even though there's no nothing in there, it's trying to work so I need to make a lot more sandstone a lot more so one of the things I'll be doing, sorting that out I'm going to finish prepping all this, get it all looking how it should then we can start putting the things in here to control the skeletons when they spawn and things like that so in the next video this sh should get finished so I hope you join me for that and um, I hope this was entertaining thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.